conference play resuming this afternoon. The front end of a doubleheader with the Aurora and Lakeland men getting set to tip off on Lancaster Court. From Thornton Gymnasium on the campus of Aurora University, it is tonight's, or today's more accurately, Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference men's basketball matchup between the visiting Muskies of Lakeland University and your Spartans of Aurora University. Welcome. Happy Saturday afternoon. My name is Sean Fry. Aurora coming in six and three on the year, two and one in the young conference season. And coming off of an overtime win over Dominican on Tuesday night, 85 to 74. Spartans up three in a first half where offense was difficult to come by. It opened up significantly in the second half, but then Aurora getting 15 to only four for the Stars in the extra session to pick up the victory and move to uh, stand corrected five and three on the season and two and one in conference play. That in mind though was a very nice night for Justin Wilson matching a season high with 22 points. Michael Osborne 19 and eight. Noah Butler had 18 for the Spartans in the win and they were dominant in the paint 60 to 32 the Spartans advantage. They've done very well to get looks in the interior and when those shots have fallen, they have performed very well this season. For Lakeland, they have been very good offensively, averaging more than 92 points per game. Fifth best in the nation. They don't turn it over a ton. They do dish it a lot. Sixth most assists per game at better than 20 per for the Muskies and their assist to turnover ratio, about 1.7. That is also in the top five in the nation. So Lakeland comes in at six, and make that seven and two on the season and one and one in conference play. Make that six and two uh, on the season for the Muskies. Once again, having said that, it was a, a nice day for the Muskies in a victory over Moody Bible as Christian Knox had 16 points, six assists, 14 points for Kai Bulliox, and then nine, nine, and five for Isaiah Hammond, who's had a terrific season for Lakeland. They have scored it in bunches, and you don't have to go back too far to first day of December when they took on Greenville, poured in a school and conference record 155 points and 47 assists. Now certainly that has had an impact on their season totals, but don't let it fool you. This is a very good offensive team and Aurora defensively will have its hands full trying to slow down the Muskies. One thing about Lakeland though, they also give up 80 per game. So for as good as they've been offensively, they have allowed a little bit at the other end as well. And we'll see if Aurora is able to take advantage of that and move to three and one in conference play. So it should be a fun one here in only a few minutes. We'll get the starting lineups, the opening tip on the way. Game number nine, of, make that game number nine of the season. Yeah, I got that right for both teams here. And it's coming up at athletics.aurora.edu.
pep band with the national anthem here on this Saturday afternoon. Sean Fry with you. Dylan Lyman is on the camera. Let's bring you the starters. First for the visiting Muskies of Lakeland University, a senior and four sophomores tonight. And sophomore, or one of the four, is the sophomore from Milwaukee, Kai Bouliot. Also a sophomore from Oostburg, Wisconsin, Cam Yeager. Another sophomore from Clintonville, Wisconsin, Aiden Polzine. A sophomore from Milwaukee, Isaiah Hammond. And a senior from Ypsilanti, Michigan, Christian Knox. Bouliox, Jaeger, Polzine, Hammond, and Knox for the Muskies. Sam Schroeder in year six with the Spartans at the helm. He has them off to a six and two start, including one and one in conference play. Now the starters for the Spartans of Aurora University, led by first year head coach Steve Christensen. Aurora coming in at five and three on the year, two and one. And the NAC, three juniors, two freshmen. Same starting lineup that we saw on Tuesday night. It is the 6'6 junior from Lawrence, Kansas, Noah Butler. 5'10 junior out of Homewood, Illinois, Julian Gatewood. A couple of freshmen from Kenosha, Wisconsin, Trey Jenkins. And from Chicago, Trey Hamilton. And from Broadview, Illinois, the junior, Michael Osborne. Butler, Gatewood, Jenkins, Hamilton, Osborne for Aurora. They'll move left to right across your dial and across your screen if you're watching in their gray uniforms with blue numbers outlined in white, Aurora in white letters outlined in blue, blue trim on the uniform as well. Again, they'll go left to right in the first half. Lakeland in navy blue with white numbers and letters outlined in gold. Lakeland on the front, they have gold and light blue trim on the sides of the uniform and around the shoulders and on the neckline as well. So the light's set to come up here over Lancaster Court. Spartans' leading scorer is Noah Butler, better than 16 points per game, just outside the top five in the league in that category. Michael Osborne also averaging 13 points. And for Lakeland, you know, a team that scores more than 90 per game, you suspect they have a number of players who can pour it in. Aiden Polzine leads the Muskies, 15 points per game. But Christian Knox, 14. Cam Yeager, averaged 16 per game last season, averaging 12 per season this year. Caleb Fuller, just under 11 points coming off the bench. And Travis Coleman, just under 10, also coming off the bench. Isaiah Hammond, 7 points, nearly 10 rebounds per game, and 5.5 and assists. Quite a year for the sophomore from Milwaukee. It's going to be Butler and Bouliox. And for the tip, Butler wins it, and we're off. Here in the first of our doubleheader today, women's game set for a 4-15 start. Quick possession here. Trey Jenkins, the handoff and the jumper in rhythm off the elbow for two, and Aurora on the board right away in this one. They'll go back and play a man-to-man -man defense. Knox gets rid of a three from the corner, and that's two baskets in 22 seconds, folks. 3-2 Lakeland here as both teams able to find the nylon on their first trip up the floor. Lakeland playing man-to-man -man as well. Aurora around the perimeter. Jenkins here looking to attack the rim, and he's stripped. Loose ball hops to Hammond, who will bring it down the floor in transition for Bouliox, who's cut off in the short corner, now goes into the post. Hammond with it there, dribbling to his left out behind the arc. Here in the opening minute, of our contest, Bouliox flashes out, gets it on the right wing, takes it to the rack, well contested there. Rebound pulled down by Hamilton, who will start it up for Aurora. He'll flip it to Butler, pulls up from the block, and the teardrop goes to make it four to three Spartans. Butler 18 and four for Aurora on Tuesday night. Into double digits for the seventh time in eight games. Three here from Cam Yeager is good, Lakeland Two for three here for the opening 90 seconds. Both makes on their two attempts from deep. 6-4 Muskies here as Gatewood picks it up on the far sideline. He'll bounce it to Osborne up top for his first touch. Step fake and then the straightaway three and that goes. And it's seven to six. Not a lot of misses here in the opening two minutes. Left wing here, Paul Zine. We'll send it out to Jaeger, top of the arc.
handoff to Paul Zine. We're going to work on Jenkins. Now to the right wing where Hammond has it there. 11 on the shot clock. The Bouliox up at the top of the arc. Right wing three from Knox. Hops off the iron a few times and then comes loose where Jaeger was able to rescue it. Fresh 20 for Lakeland. He gets into the lane and will get the hoop in the harm. So the foul here will put Jaeger to the line for the and one. He's 10 of 14 at the strike on the season after Jenkins picks up the foul. And it goes to make it 9 to 7. Muskies ahead here, 1740 left in the first half, where the shooting percentages have been high. Osborne on the right wing. It is early. Both teams really feeling it from the field so far. Jenkins for Osborne. And to the far sideline, Hamilton. He'll drive and kick. Osborne steps around to close out, wants the step back long deuce that's off the rim. It's tipped into the corner and out of bounds. Maybe Muskie's ball here. Two and change. Into the first half here. Bouliox with it. Near corner. This is Polzine looking for space. He'll swing it out to Jaeger. Still out on the perimeter here to Bouliox in the corner. Ten on the shot clock. He'll throw it through the lane and it was read by Hamilton who steals it, goes the other way in transition, flips it for Gatewood, slicing to the rim and he lays it in. And we're square at nine, 16.43 remaining in the first half. Here's Hammond to Polzine on the left wing. Aurora still in a man look. Jaeger. This drive is cut off. It goes out for Knox. He'll try to drive, and that is poked away by Butler. Two on one. He'll skip it to Osborne right to the rim for the lay-in. Aurora in front. 11-9, 16-17 remaining in our first half. And it's Hammond. Left side here. A little bit of contact there, no calls. It goes out for Jaeger, and now Bouliox picks it up far corner. He looks to attack the rim. Cut off there to Knox for the quick left wing three off the rim. Rebound for Osborne, ahead in transition, and Gatewood won the jump ball and then was taken to the floor by Knox. And that will be Lakeland's first foul of the half. Looks like we're going to see Travis Coleman here enter the game for Lakeland. More than four minutes into the first half. Osborne going to inbounded here. Osborne in for Jenkins. Quick give and go with Hamilton. And now Butler picks it up. Short corner on the far side. Into the lane, right to the rim. Left that one short so the shot clock doesn't reset. Ten to shoot here. Gatewood. Pulls up for the right elbow jumper. No good there, but a nice rebound by Jenkins and then had it stripped off of him and out of bounds. Still 11-9 Spartans. 15-30 to play in our first half. As Knox gives it to Hammond. It was Bouliox, by the way, who checked out of the game for Lakeland a moment ago. Jaeger left side. He'll give it to Coleman who wants the three in rhythm. Back iron and no good. And it looked like Jenkins had that boxed out, but Hammond did well to go up and get it. And then got fouled on the way back up as Jenkins gives his first foul. So we'll see Hammond to the line here. First one goes to make it 11 to 10. And we'll see John Young, the junior from Bellwood, Illinois, come into the contest. He'll replace Jenkins here. Second free throw from Hammond is good, and we're even up at 11, five minutes. 
just about. And now exactly into our first half. Here's Gatewood. Sorora brings it into the front court. Young goes out and gets it up top. And now to Osborne on the right wing. Around the arc it goes to Hamilton in the corner. He feeds Gatewood short corner left side. Pass along the baseline. And then around the arc it goes to the left wing where Hamilton left the three short. Ball goes to the floor after the strip from Butler. And then he's fouled lunging for it. And that'll be his first. And Aurora's third so far in the half. That'll allow Justin Wilson to come in. Senior from Plainfield off of a season-high 22 points against Dominican. Second time. Hit that mark. One off his career high. Did it in the NAC opener against Illinois Tech as well. He's going to replace Butler here at this stoppage. Lakeland going to work, trying to retake the lead. Ball poked out of Knox's hands. He gets it back goes to the rim, lost the floater, then pulls in the offensive board. He's fouled on the putback, and right now the defensive glass not kind to Aurora. Back-to-back -back possessions where Lakeland has gotten a second chance and a trip to the line. Foul was on Osborne, fourth team foul, and here's Polzine making the first free throw. Both free throws go for Polzine. 13-11 the score, a miss in deep from Young. Lakeland the other way in transition. And off here on the left side, that's Knox. Midway through the shot clock here. Polzine along the baseline, lost it and then trying to maintain possession, throws it away. Young with the steal in his own lane. Ahead the other way as Aurora trying to get back level this time up the floor. 13.35 left in the first half. A handoff here for Gatewood. Wilson high post, quick deuce here, doesn't get the friendly roll. Nice rebound by Young, put back doesn't go either. Tip back won't fall, and then the loose ball Tipped away by Polzine in transition, Jaeger for two. 15-11 Muskies, 13-06 playing the first half. And the Muskies want a quick 6-0 run here. Well, not that quick, actually. Aurora hasn't scored the last three-plus minutes, and that continues here. Three from Hamilton, no good, but the offensive board by Gatewood. And the putback with the reverse doesn't fall either. Jaeger will get a look from three at the other end, but that doesn't go. Osborne the rebound. He'll try to start it up the other way. Lakeland does well to get back on transition defense. And Aurora will settle into its half-court offense. It's still a man-to-man -man look here for Aurora, uh, rather for Lakeland against Aurora. Gatewood left wing driving. Pulls up from 12, left it short. Young the offensive board. A power dribble, still with it and then look to leave it into the lane for Osborne. There was nothing there. It's taken away, and Hammond eventually able to secure that. He'll get it ahead for Coleman. The Jaeger for the corner three. It's good, and Steve Christensen wants a timeout. No points for Aurora over the last four and change. 30-second timeout here with Lakeland up 18-11. to 12.03 left in the first half. Lots going on around the knack here. Illinois Tech home to Concordia, Wisconsin today. It's 11 to 10 Falcons early in that one. Rockford and St. Norbert in action. Four minutes in, Rockford up six to one there. Wisconsin Lutheran, a 13 to seven early lead at Dominican. Concordia, Chicago in action today. They're taking on Marion in River Forest. And it's MSOE on the road at Benedictine today. Cougars, by the way, leading Marion 12 to 10 early in that one. And then AU Men's Wrestling is at North Central College today for an invite. It's 
Spartans with the ball out of the timeout. Nolan Boffman and Javon McCautry both in for their first minute. So is Robert Ruskevich, who was cutting as that pass went to him, or at least where he had been. And it goes out of bounds. So to reset the lineup here, Osborne and Wilson remain in the lineup. Boffman, McCautry, and Ruskevich enter. And for Lakeland, here's Asanje Hunter, and he throws that one nearly into the scorer's table. It was saved by Coleman, and then the second attempt here for Lakeland to throw it out of bounds is successful. So Asanje Hunter and Caleb Fuller fresh into the game. Bouliox returns, Polzine and Co Coleman remain on the floor for the Muskies. It's 18 to 11, and Aurora hasn't scored. And very nearly the last five minutes. Wilson in the lane. Fall away here from the key falls off the rim. Tipped out of bounds. Lakeland ball. Aurora right now can't hit anything. Now one for their last 11 from the field. That will not do at all. For some context, they started out four of five. It's a travel on Lakeland. Fifth turnover for the Muskies here in the opening nine minutes. So 5-10 and counting here, the scoreless drought for Aurora. Boffman out on the right wing. A 9-0 run here for the Muskies. McCautry taking it from the corner, fouled on the finger roll, and he'll go to the line for a couple. Second Lakeland foul is the first on Caleb Fuller. McCautry 5 for 11 at the stripe this season. Hemorrhaging 5.5 points, 2.5 rebounds on the young season. He misses the free throw here. Got off to a terrific start. 26 points on 11 of 16 from the field in his first couple of games. Averaging just three per game in the six games since. And only 21% from the field. It's an empty trip this time down the floor for the freshman at the line. And it stays 18 to 11. So the scoreless drought continues here for Aurora. Bouliox out on the right wing. Aurora's defense being leaned on a lot here through this stretch of the first half. Hunter. Fuller and now Polzine on the left side. The Bouliox who has it in front of the Spartan bench, driving here, and McCautry did well to pin him to the baseline. Well, that's certainly good to see from the freshman. You know, sometimes when the shots don't fall, you have to find other ways to impact the game, and McCautry does a nice job that time down the floor defensively. Try to get him going here. He's on the left wing, the pump fake into the high post, and then feeds Boffman near side. The crossover, the spin move, the kick outside, deep three from Osborne, well off the line. The rebound tipped a few times and finally rescued by Coleman. But Aurora now hasn't scored in the last nearly six and a half minutes. So the drought continues. They're one for their last 12 now from the field. Fuller for three for Lakeland, then it goes as their advantage goes to 10. 21-11, we're into the 11th minute of this contest. Long two here from Boffman, wide open. That doesn't fall either. Rebound tip to Bouliox. Polzine steps into an open three, and it's good. Another timeout here from Steve Christensen, who is less than impressed with the team's performance at this point, and this will be another 30-second timeout for the Spartans, 24 to 11. A 15-0 run for Lakeland over the last 6.57. We've only played for a little more than 10 and a half minutes. So Aurora hasn't scored for a solid 60% of the time played so far. Out of the timeout, Boffman, McCautry, Osborne and Wilson all staying on. JT Daniels is in for his first minutes, replacing Ruskevich. Still a man-to-man -man look here for Lakeland. 
Wilson on the right wing, looks to attack, gets to the rim. That doesn't fall, rebound is loose. Coleman gets the board and gets rid of it before he could fall out of bounds. The Muskies will advance it into the half court and go to work. Same five out there for the Muskies. Fuller, the nice take and the nice finish. 26 to 11 as the Muskies continue to grow their lead here. Aurora has missed 13 of its last 14 field goal attempts. Wilson to Boffman on the left wing. Wants a screen, now will bounce it into the post for Daniels. A few right-handed dribbles, he'll kick it. McCautry the corner three, that doesn't fall. Fuller with the board. And it'll be Hunter bringing it up the floor. Right wing Hammond. And Bouliox picks it up up top. Back to Hammond on the right side. So Bouliox drives, gets fouled, and won. Foul here is on Wilson. Fifth team foul. Going to see Wilson come off for Butler. Several changes for Lakeland. Lineup's going to be Hammond, Fuller, Knox, Jaeger, and now Bouliox, who stands at the line trying to make this an 18-point lead with 8.04 to play in the first half, and he does. 29-11. That is a 20 to nothing run over the last 8.16, and counting. Butler driving to the rim, no, but he's fouled. So Butler will have a chance to finally get Aurora back onto the scoreboard here as Hammond picks up what will be his first foul and the team's third. Butler on the season, an 84% free throw shooter in the top five in the NAC. Also one of the conference leaders in getting to the line. This will be his 43rd free throw attempt of the season. Leaves it. First one short. 8.29 since Aurora's last points. And it's going to continue to be since its last field goal. Free throw good. It's 29 to 12. Aurora now looking to press. Lakeland breaks it. Jaeger, a wide open three. Up over 40% from three on the season for the sophomore from Oostburg, Wisconsin. McCautry will kick it deep three. Osborne, no. Rebound for Hammond. And it's now been nine minutes and counting since the last Aurora field goal. Jaeger, the miss, the offensive board and the putback. 34 to 12. Right now, Aurora can't get much of anything going. Here's a reach-in foul on Knox. We'll see Gatewood and Hamilton re-enter the game here. Last Aurora field goal was with 16-20 remaining. Hamilton on the right wing here for Aurora. Under seven to play in the first half. It's 34 to 12. Here's Butler for three. From the corner, no good. Spartans now shooting under 23% for the game. Hammond right wing here. 34-12, the Muskies lead. To Fuller up top, he'll wire a pass into the lane for Jaeger, who's fall away jumper on the baseline, doesn't go. Rebound for Daniels, ahead for Hamilton, looking to get all the way to the rim and will at least get to the line. If you can't get the shots to fall, you can at least do this. This will be the fifth team foul on Lakeland and the first on Kai Bouliox. Hamilton has not been to the line much this season. It's his fourth and fifth attempts coming up. First free throw go. 34-13.
Tammy Ager already with 16 for Lakeland. No one for Aurora has more than five. Hamilton makes both three ones here. The Lakeland lead is 20. Aurora will force Lakeland to work it up the court against a passive press. Fuller left side up top, Bouliox, and now to Hunter on the right wing. He'll feed Jaeger in the post. Didn't handle it clean, but will kick it out. It goes into the corner for Hammond. His drive is cut off, out to Bouliox for to shoot. Takes it along the baseline. It's called for the offensive foul. His second and Lakeland's last foul to give in this first half. He'll come out of the game for Coleman, and it looks like Polzine is going to replace Fuller here. Just under six minutes left in the first half. Aurora has now gone more than 10 minutes without a field goal. Now 10 and a half minutes without a field goal. Bounce pass into the lane here for Gatewood, who finally ends that drought. And Julian has four points to make it 34 to 16. It's still a 25 to seven run over the last 11 minutes. Now Gatewood with the steal. Aurora trying to rally here. Gatewood right to the rim and in. Timeout Lakeland. This will be a full timeout. 526 to play in the first half. It's 34-18 Lakeland. This is Aurora University men's basketball. After Aurora went for quite literally the majority, and it will remain the majority of the first half without a field goal. Back-to-back -back buckets and a 6-0 run overall over the last minute. 50, and Lakeland spills it out of bounds. Hunter just tripped, and Aurora able to force the turnover here after Lakeland called the timeout. Gatewood, Hamilton, Butler, Daniels, and Osborne, the five on the floor for Aurora who have dug a rather large hole, but are trying to climb out of it here. Gatewood right around his man, right to the rim and through. And Gatewood now with eight, very nearly all in a row here for Aurora. And once again, force Lakeland to work the ball up the floor. And it comes to Hammond. Hammond, Polzine, Jaeger, Coleman, and Hunter, the five here for the Muskies. Three from Polzine, and it goes. He has eight. Lakeland now seven of 11 from deep. Came in shooting just under 40% as a team from outside, and they have stayed warm from the perimeter. Here's Gatewood trying it again. Left his leaner short. Polzine tracked down that rebound, and the Muskies get it across the timeline. Leading 37 to 20 with 4.13 left before halftime. I think if you're Aurora, just get it to single digits here before halftime, you'd feel pretty good about where you're at going to the intermission. Hunter, eight to shoot, hands it off to Polzine for three more. And the Lakeland lead back to 20. Now Polzine came in leading the Muskies at better than 15 per game, 40% from deep, can't leave him open. Take from Osborne. And he gets the teardrop to go for the answer. 40 to 22. And once again, Aurora with that 1 2 2. And Lakeland handles that well. And they go into their offense. Polzine on the perimeter. 
leaves it for Coleman up top and into the post. Tamman across the gym. Hunter steps out for three. Got it. Hunter. Now six for 10 on the season from deep. And the hot three-point shooting will not cease for Lake Lanier as they go up 21. Butler taking it to the rim, too strong. Rebound for Hammond and out the other way in transition for Jaeger on the left wing. Polzine, deep left wing three, got it. Oh, what can you say? Lakeland shooting 71% from three, 10 of 14. Hamilton eye off the window, doesn't draw iron. Rebound out of bounds off of Daniels. Largest lead tonight for the Muskies with 2.34 to play before halftime. Muskies have hit eight of their last nine three-point attempts. And it peeled off a 12 to two run over the last two and a half minutes. Knox has got that pass ahead of a steal attempt that goes to the corner for Coleman. He misses from deep. He's a 40% three point shooter. Doesn't get this one here. And then Butler coast to coast for the lay-in. Well, Butler has five. Jaeger. Outside Coleman, steps around a closeout to Hunter. He'll step inside, and that one too deep to the rim. Jaeger gets the offensive board and is fouled on the way back up. Offensive rebounds are fairly even. Now five to four in favor of Lakeland, but the results have not been. Lakeland a 9-0 advantage on second chance points and an opportunity to add to it here as Jaeger goes back to the line after Butler's second foul. He makes the first free throw. Both teams will be in the one and one for the last buck 53 of the half. Looks like McCautry and Wilson back into the contest. Osborne and Daniels out. We're gonna see Yaki enter as well and send Butler off. It's 47 to 24 Lakeland. Lakeland has put up 100 three times this season and are on pace to do it again unless Aurora is able to find a way to cool off the Muskies from the field. 15 of their 25 attempts have been from three and 10 of them have gone. There's a three for Gatewood. And he'll be the first Spartan into double digits tonight. 11 points on five of nine from the field. 48-27, 90 seconds left before halftime. Here's Jaeger straight to the rack, he's got 20 here in this first half. All-conference honorable mention last season. And had a very nice first half. Here's McCotry, the drive and the finish off the window. 50 to 29, Lakeland across the timeline. Polzine with a three with a minute to play in the first half and it goes. The 11th three for Lakeland. Well, at this point, it doesn't matter how many buckets Aurora makes the rest of the way. If Lakeland's going to go down the floor and get three every time, there's not going to be a comeback. Wilson for two in the lane. His first points tonight. Lakeland lead is 22. There's a seven-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Lakeland likes to get shots up. More than 70 field goal attempts four times this season. They have only 27, that's all they've needed. Here's a drive, clean block by McCautry. An inbound coming up here with eight on the shot clock. Still Lakeland ball, 15 seconds left in the half. In for Polzine, quick three, no good. Rebound tipped right to Coleman who puts it back. Last possession here will go to Aurora down 24. McCautry kicks it out. Hamilton for three at the horn, doesn't get it. 
And Lakeland will take a 55 to 31 lead over Lakeland in the halftime. We'll go around the neck, bring you the halftime totals coming up. This is Aurora University men's basketball.
Lakeland with a 24 point advantage at halftime leading Aurora 55 to 31. Welcome back from Thornton Gymnasium on the campus of Aurora University. My name is Sean Fry at the help of Dylan Lyman on the camera earlier. We'll even Ethan Carmine in a bit. And we thank those two for their efforts here. Aurora 13 of 34 from the field. Contrast 18 of 30 for Lakeland. That's a 22% difference. Lakeland 11 of 17, a scorching 65% from deep. Aurora was just two of nine. Lakeland eight of eight at the free throw line. Aurora was three for six. Rebounds. 25 to 9 in favor of Lakeland. Some of that, of course, is frankly, Aurora just had way more misses than Lakeland, but 7 to 4 on the offensive glass. And for that, Lakeland has a 13 0 advantage in second chance points. Turnovers 9 for the Muskies, only 3 for Aurora. And Aurora has a 10 to 3 advantage in points off of turnovers. For the Spartans, Julian Gatewood is 11 points, 7 for Michael Osborne, 5 for Noah Butler, 2 apiece, Trey Jenkins, Trey Hamilton, Justin Wilson, Javon McCautry. But for Lakeland, Cam Yeager already with 20 points, plus 5 rebounds. Aiden Polzine has 17 points. Talk about some large first halves. Polzine is just 4 off of his season high. Elsewhere, five points for Caleb Fuller, three apiece for Kai Bulliox, Isaiah Hammond, and Asanje Hunter, two for Christian Knox with five rebounds, and for Travis Coleman. Lakeland has led by 24 at most on a handful of separate occasions, including as we stand here at halftime. And so Aurora with some work to do, only the second time that they've trailed at the half this season. They lost that contest earlier this year. They were two and 15 when trailing at the break last season for Lakeland six and one when having the advantage to begin the second half. Elsewhere, Illinois Tech leads Concordia, Wisconsin at halftime 46 to 37. It's Rockford a 32 to 30 advantage at home against St. Norbert. Also at halftime, and at halftime in River Forest, Wisconsin Lutheran leads Dominican 48 to 27. Across town, Concordia Chicago trails Marion at the half 47 to 46, and we don't have a result or a score from MSOE and Benedictine. So we get underway, Lakeland and Navy left to right here. They're starting five, Bulliox, Jaeger, Polzine, Knox, and Hammond. And Lakeland will turn it over on their first possession. Spartans right to left in gray. They have their starters, Butler, Gatewood, Jenkins, Hamilton, and Osborne. And we'll see what Aurora can do here as they try to get back into this contest. They'll face a man-to-man -man defense here. Bounce pass. Gatewood on the far side will pull up from 12. Back iron no good. Butler goes in, gets the rebound, waits out. Defender, the first miss, got his own rebound again, missed again from in tight. And this time Lakeland secures the rebound. Well, that's two points right there that Aurora desperately wants to have back. Here's a ball tipped out of the hands of Hammond. Muskies will keep it. And I think the, the execution offensively for Aurora at least from up here, for the most part, seemed like they were getting a lot of the looks that they wanted and didn't make anything. And I think as that began to pile up, maybe there was a bit of settling on the offensive end. And it was more about what Aurora wasn't doing defensively, and that was getting Lakeland to cool off at all. And Polzine with a miss from the lane. And Aurora gets a couple of stops. Hamilton goes coast to coast. The miss, Butler the follow, and the finish. For some context, Lakeland 7 of 14 on twos. That's 65% on threes, so maybe Polzine a moment ago, he was just too close to the rim. That three was off the mark. Rebound tipped a few times. Jenkins stays with it, gets the rebound. Aurora in transition. Butler for Gatewood. Nice pitch and catch there across the lane. Gatewood is 13, and Aurora... Couple of buckets on back-to-back -back possessions, down 55 to 35. Lakeland has a
hasn't scored the first couple of minutes so far. And I'll get a chance to get on the board here inside that window as Hamilton gives his first foul. Aurora hasn't shot a ton of threes this year, just in general. They haven't shot it well here on so far back-to-back -back contests. Just one of ten against Dominican on Tuesday, two of nine so far. But haven't gotten anything to fall at the rim or around the lane either. 56-35 after Polzine makes the first free throw. Lakeland has made all nine of its free throw attempts to this point. Now 10 for 10. 57-35. Lot of game left. And Aurora is going to need to be efficient offensively and very good defensively. Butler gets it here in the short corner. Right-handed dribbles as he backs down Hammond to his left. The jumper, no. Rebound tipped back to Butler. Stripped on his way to the rim. And they'll signal this Lakeland ball. And Steve Christensen is appealing that that was off of a tip. And from this angle, I would tend to agree, but Officiating crew disagrees, and it'll be Muskie's ball as they bring it into the half court. Polzine up top to Knox, and back the other way it goes on the reverse. Polzine just inside the three-point corner, swings it up top, Hammond, and out of Knox on the right wing. Ten to shoot. Polzine trips, loose ball. Osborne picks it up, coast to coast, and the finish. 37 for Aurora, down 20. Three minutes elapsed in the second half. And there's a foul away from the ball. As Hamilton goes to the floor. Fishers are going to discuss, but looks like it's going to be Aurora's. That's an offensive foul on Polzine. I didn't get a good look at exactly what happened. The second team foul on Lakeland. See if we can get a look here on the video. That's just a push. I think that very easily could have been a technical foul and it wasn't. Just a push of Hamilton. Spartans will have it. Gatewood out on the right wing. For Hamilton and into the corner it goes to Jenkins. He looks to feed Osborne. Corner left side, back to the basket to his right, tries the hook and got it. And Osborne has 11. Aurora now inside of down 20. Bouliox tries to turn the corner, he's cut off outside the Knox. Aurora trying to take away the three here. Knox and now Hammond on the right wing, driving, spinning right to the rim. It's good. It's a nice take by Hammond. Been rather quiet offensively tonight. Has five now. Lakeland lead restored the 20 years. Gatewood from 10 off the lane, and it's good. Osborne will pick up the dime there. 59-41, under 16 to play in this one. Bouliox, left wing, pulls up for the long two. Doesn't get that. Good box out by Butler. And Aurora will start it down the near side. Gatewood on the left wing. Dribbles up top. He'll give it to Hamilton. Jenkins, and now Butler. The 15 on the baseline. Works it up top, Gatewood. For three, no. Long rebound, though, for Butler. Gets it, goes right back to the rim, and will go to the line. Fouls on Hammond. It'll be his second, team's third. Well, I don't think there's a lot of doubt that Aurora has been the better team through the first four and a half minutes of the second half. It's the first 20 minutes that were the problem. Butler makes the free throw. Coleman's going to replace Bouliox here for Lakeland. We'll see Boffman come in here. Looks like he's going to be entering for the shooter, Butler. Noah has eight, Noah has nine.
looks like Hamilton, in fact, is going to come off, not Butler. Here with the free throw make, it's 59-43. As Aurora has carved eight points off of the Lakeland halftime advantage. There's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on Jenkins. It's his third, team's second. 15-16 left. Second half, Aurora trailing 59-43. Knox the inbound is a jump ball and Boffman takes it. He'll go right to the rack and lays it in. Well, if you're Sam Schroeder, are you thinking timeout? Maybe one more Aurora bucket might do it. Knox for three, it's a good look and it's pure. Now Lakeland wants a timeout. Sixty-two forty-five full timeout Muskies. This is Aurora University men's basketball. Out of the timeout, 62-45, Lakeland leading, 14-57. Remaining in this one, Boffman, Osborne, Gatewood, Butler, Jenkins, the five on the floor for the Spartans. Gatewood lost the handle on the loose ball, skips to Jaeger. Jaeger, Knox, Hammond, Coleman, and Fuller now on the floor. Fuller right into the game, right into a three, no and the rebound out of bounds. Spartans will keep it. Well, misses from outside have been hard to come by for Lakeland in this one. Aurora will take it. And they'll look to try to carve into this lead a little bit more. Osborne off the crossover right to the rim, no good. The rebound secured for a moment by Lakeland. Jenkins took it away, then gave it to Butler, who muscles his way to the rack. He was fouled at the free throw line. That'll be the third Lakeland foul. It's going to be on Coleman here. His first. Osborne tosses it in for Butler and then gets it back on the handoff on the right wing. Around the arc to Boffman and into the corner, Gatewood. For Osborne and a quick toss up top. Gatewood for Boffman on the left wing, looking to drive, tries the fall away off of one foot and got it. Oh yeah, tough bucket for Boffman who has a couple of field goals now today and Aurora trails by 15. Here is an offensive foul on Lakeland. They get Jaeger for the push off as he flashed out. It's the 15th Lakeland turnover. They averaged under 12 giveaways per game coming in. So Aurora has done well to force it a bit for Lakeland. It's already five turnovers through six minutes plus in the second half. Spartans down 15, Boffman off the dribble, tries it up and under, gets the floater. It is 62-49, still a ways to go for Aurora, but rallying here. Knox, right wing, double teamed briefly, swings it out on the far side, Coleman, and then wires a pass in, Fuller from the block, no good. Osborne the rebound. High post here and loses it. Was expecting Gatewood to come behind him. 
They weren't on the same page, but you can see Aurora getting into a rhythm at long last. And can they keep the momentum going? Fuller with it on the left wing. Muskie's just two of seven from the field here so far in this second half. As Aurora has turned up the intensity defensively. Jaeger trying to get inside. Pass found its way to Knox somehow, and then he takes down Butler. Another offensive foul on Lakeland. And this is the third on Knox. So he'll come out. Hunter will replace him. We're going to see Polzine enter as well for Fuller. 12.37 left. Muskies held scoreless over the last two minutes. Aurora down 62-49, but threatening here. Boffin is out on the left wing. Looks to take it to the rim and gets, no, not the bucket and one. He's called for a travel. He can't believe it, Steve Christensen is absolutely in disbelief. And letting the official know that he does not agree with that call. So Lakeland trying to take advantage, pulls in for three, got it. And Boffman is down and signaling for some assistance, but getting up and walking off. So Boffman's going to come off here going to be replaced by McCautry and is going to get a little bit of assistance on the bench but it's good to see that he came off on his own there and we'll see if he's able to resume. Aurora down 65-49 now under 12 to play. Here's the runner from Jenkins and he'll go to the line. Polzine gives the foul. His second, how about that folks? That's 16 fouls on Lakeland. Aurora is going to be in the one and one for the rest of this ball game. Jenkins at the line misses. That has been a problem for Aurora today. I haven't been to the line a lot. Under just five of nine. Jenkins himself now seven of 12 at the line this season. He'll split them here and the Lakeland lead is 15. Is it enough time? Aurora took nine off in eight minutes. A bit of an out of control take there by Hunter. But Aurora is going to bail him out a bit here as Butler gets into him and will give his third foul. Team's third as well. Hunter goes to the line. He's been at the stripe a few times this year. Hasn't missed a lot, but. This is here. Came in 10 of 12 at the line. Second free throw goes. 66 50. Lakeland certainly hoping that it has weathered the Spartan rally. Aurora will try to get back on track here. Osborne driving. The floater no good. The tip back Jenkins. Five for the freshman. And now Lakeland goes to work at the other end. It's Hammond. Had it tipped away, and Gatewood runs onto the loose ball. Aurora with numbers. Gatewood the lay-in. Spartans down by a dozen. It's as close as they've been in quite a while. 66-54 with 11 to play. Coleman. Going into the post, Hammond didn't handle it clean, got a little help from the country. And Bouliox will replace Coleman here at the stoppage. Aurora has outscored Lakeland 21 to, make that 23 to 11 since halftime. Muskies are just three of eight from the field and they've turned it over eight times. That's been the recipe. Bouliox inside Hammond. Once again, loses the handle, but looks like McCautry. I'll make that Jenkins. Got a piece of the arm. 
Good to see Nolan Boffman coming back to the table. He's going to enter and replace Jenkins. 10.43 remaining 12 point Lakeland advantage. Muskies have only four three point attempts since halftime after putting up 17 in the first. Aurora's forced them to go to work from the interior and it hasn't gone so well. Jump shot from Jaeger, no good. No one boxed out Bouliox. He gets right there and puts it back. And second chance points continue to be unkind to Aurora. Boffman, the hoop and the harm. He was denied one earlier on a travel. This one will count. Hunter gives the foul. And Boffman will go to the line for the and one. Here Wilson will come in and replace Michael Osborne. This is an area Boffman would like to improve upon, no doubt. He was a 65% free throw shooter last season, but he's just three of nine so far this year. But makes this one here, 68-57 now. Aurora will pick up Lakeland full and only bring two into the backcourt and let Lakeland bring it up. Hunter, his drive cut off, gives it to Bouliox. His drive cut off, now to Jaeger. Out on the right wing. Ball goes inside, that's Hammond, and an offensive foul called on him. That's his third. Team's eighth, again, Aurora in the bonus for the remainder of the contest. This time it's the freshman, McCautry, who hits the deck. And Aurora's going to try to get back within single digits here. Gatewood across the timeline as we are midway through the second half. Wilson on the bounce, has it in the left elbow. Looks to take it to the rim from a tough angle, gets it. 68-59, it's a three possession game. Aurora has outscored Lakeland 28 to 13. Here through the opening 10 of the half. This pass tipped out of bounds by Boffman as Hunter was looking for a cutting Bouliox. Now Hunter comes off as Knox replaces him and he'll go into inbound it. Aurora's made six of its last seven attempts from the field. Lakeland still 40% from the field, but hasn't been what it was in the first half. Jaeger from the elbow fouled by Wilson. Wilson can't believe it, but from up here, it looked like a good call. As Jaeger's shooting stroke was impeded. And so Lakeland, back to the line here. Jaeger himself, three of three. On the day, now four of four. Made 14 of 18 at the line this season. Looks like Gatewood's going to get a breather. Hamilton replaces him for Aurora. Lakeland lead is 10 with 9.25 to play. Both teams with four timeouts remaining. Aurora's in the bonus. They have the possession arrow as well. Full timeout Lakeland here after Jaeger makes both 70 to 59. Muskies in front, 9.25 left. This is Aurora University men's basketball. Spartans trailing 70 to 59 with 9.25 to play, but they were down by 24 at the break. Well, and so if you're doing the math here, you're down 24, you've got to get 
12 off of it in the first half, 12 off of it in the second half, right? And, uh, you're going to break it down in the quarters. So Aurora's on pace. We'll have the ball here. Boffman, Wilson, Hamilton, McCautry, and Butler, the five on the floor. Here's Boffman in the post, tries the floater from inside. No good. Rebound came to McCautry, and he puts it up and in. Once again, it's a nine-point game. Well, Lakeland was in a situation where they just needed to play to a draw in the second half, and they'd win by a ton. Right now, it feels like they're trying to hang on. Jaeger for three. My goodness, can he shoot the basketball? 25 tonight on 8 of 12 from the field, 4 of 5 from 3 for Cam Jaeger. He's 3 off his season high, to 6 off his career high now. Puts Lakeland back up a dozen. Boffin off the crossover, the drive and the runner doesn't go. Muskies after the rebound, back the other direction. Here's Knox up top for Bouliox and now Polzine. Goes up top where it's cut off by Knox. Hand off to Bouliox, 10 on the shot clock. Knox again on the right wing. Hamilton switches on to him, pokes it out of his hands. Initially tried to signal that the referee was informed no and then nodded in agreement. Under eight to play now, 7.58 to be exact, 73.61 Muskies. Four to shoot as they get it in, Knox for three up top, doesn't draw iron, and the shot clock reset, but the official stayed with it and will call the shot clock violation. So a nice job. Nice job there by the officials to stay with that. Aurora will take back possession. Baseline here, Wilson skips his way in, gets the bucket and one. Foul here is on Jaeger, his second, team's ninth, and after Wilson shoots the and one, Aurora will shoot two the rest of the ball game. Wilson, very good free throw shooter, completes the three point play. Just under 90% on the season. And once again, Aurora now nine, but this has been as close as they've been able to get few times now. And Bouliox was a bit out of control, but Aurora went for an ill-advised reach in and will once again bail out. Perhaps an out of control Lakeland drive. That's Aurora's last foul to give, it's on Boffman. That'll be his first. Lakeland gets 20 more, leading 73-64, 7.32 to play. Butler tips the inbound pass into the Muskies bench. Lakeland hasn't gone very deep into its bench. They've played only eight so far in this one. Aurora's gone a little bit deeper. Nine players with at least eight minutes, and then three others have gotten on the floor for spells as well. Hammond for Polzine up the top of the arc. Seven to shoot. Goes inside Hammond. Boffman guards him. The up and under, and it's a beauty from Hammond. And he has eight. Still trailing well behind Cam Yeager's 25 and Aiden Polzine's 22. It's a season high for the latter. Pass went for Wilson, who didn't quite handle it clean, but it will be guided into the Spartan bench by the Muskies. 16 on the shot clock here as the ball goes in. It's a 75-64 Lakeland advantage. Have the Muskies stop the bleeding. Wilson for Hamilton on the left wing. Seven to shoot. Into the post, McCautry. Real tough angle here. Has to go back outside for Hamilton. Is three no good. Butler. Big rebound there, right back to the rack, lays it in. Butler now, 11 and seven tonight. But here we are again, a Lakeland nine point advantage. Aurora hasn't been able to get any closer. Knox for three, got it. And 
that's the 15th three-pointer cashed in by the Muskies tonight. They go back up a dozen. Bothman, top of the key here for Aurora, spins. Now feeds Bothman. Corner right side, the fall away here. He'll get fouled and go to the line. That's on Bouliox, his third. Shooting foul, but would have been two anyway, as we mentioned, with Aurora in the double bonus. 6.01 left, it's 78-66. Butler three of four at the free throw line. So far in this contest, first free throw is good. Gatewood will replace Hamilton here. We'll see Coleman re-enter and give Bulliox a breather. Only Trey Jenkins has four fouls. Butler has three for Aurora and then knocks Hammond and Bulliox all three apiece. So no one's super worried on the Lakeland bench about their foul situation. Like Butler will get very likely his last breather of this one as Osborne replaces him. The lead is 10 with six to play. It's not insurmountable, but Lakeland's been able to keep Aurora at this arm's length. Here is Knox driving, nothing easy about that as he gets the finish and has nine points, five rebounds, and four assists on the day. Now Wilson looking for the answer, the drive and the lead for Osborne who nearly missed that layup, but nearly wasn't enough. It goes through and it's 80 to 70. Lakeland can play that game. And trading buckets will put them in the win column. Knox for three off the mark. Osborne the rebound. Finally, Aurora a chance. Good transition pass. Gatewood for two. How about that toss from Michael Osborne? And it's 80 to 72. Now Aurora inside that nine point mark, if only barely. What can they do from here? Hammond. For Knox, left wing for three, no. Osborne the rebound. He brings it across the timeline. 4.50 left. Wilson across the gym. McCutry, huge three here, no. The line drive, couldn't put it home. Coleman the rebound, he gets it back across the timeline, calls timeout. 30-second timeout here, 4.37 left. Lakeland 24-point halftime lead is down to eight, 80 to 72. Illinois Tech leading comfortably at home against Concordia, Wisconsin, 66 to 47, midway through the second half. Also at the midpoint of the second frame, it's St. Norbert leading at Rockford, 48-46. Wisconsin Lutheran cruising at Dominican, 70 to 40, midway through the second half. 4.52 left, Concordia Chicago leads at home against Marion, 84 to 74. And again, we still don't have anything for MSOE and Benedictine. And the men's game is a two o'clock start, or so we're told, and we just haven't seen anything pop up as far as a score at this point. Lakeland ball out of the timeout. Polzine over to Knox on the right wing. We'll feed Coleman, seven to shoot. Goes out to Hammond on the left side. Nearly lost the ball, stayed with it, and then pours in the contested baseline J. Now Hammond now with 10. Lakeland advantage back to 10 with four to play. Jenkins has re-entered. He's out there with Osborne, Boffman, Butler and Gatewood. Gatewood here, got a lane to the rim, laid it in. Gatewood is 21. A season high for the junior at 11 in the first half and Adds 10 more here after halftime. Once again, it's 82-74, an eight-point advantage for Lakeland. Three and a half left. Polzine, the corner for Coleman. 10 on the shot clock here. Boffman got him to pick up his dribble. Jaeger came free, but his three was well off the line. Butler gets the board. It's getting tense. Here in Thornton Gymnasium is Aurora closing in. 
Jenkins left wing, feeds Butler in the post, double team, threw it away. Coleman rolled over and cut off the pass along the baseline. And Knox walks it across the timeline with three to play. A hot shooting first half. Looking right now like it'll be enough for Lakeland, but it's not over. Polzine driving his pass along the baseline, goes to the floor, and Butler steals it. Looking to get ahead in transition. For Jenkins, he's bumped and will go to the line. That is Hammond's fourth foul with 2.37 left. And Jenkins, who split a couple of free throws earlier in the half, will try to bring Aurora ever so slightly closer. Aurora plus 16 for the second half, now plus 15. 82-75. Boffman exits for Wilson. And Jenkins gets the ball back. Trying to make it a two possession game. Spins out. Hammond collects the rebound. So it stays 82 75. Knocks across the timeline. They'll hand it off for Coleman. Into the high post, Jaeger hops his way down and missed from in tight. Rebound for Jenkins. Outside for Osborne. It's two on five here. Osborne attacks anyway. Floater doesn't go, it's off the window, comes back down to Osborne, and he gets it to fall off back iron. It's a five point game with two minutes left. 82-77, full timeout, Aurora. And we will have a fight to the finish line coming up. This is Aurora University men's basketball. Lakeland hasn't scored in nearly two and a half minutes. And they've let a 24 point halftime lead dwindle to only five. Two minutes left, Muskies up 82 to 77. I'll have Knox, Coleman, Jaeger, Polzine, and Hammond on the floor as they try to just hang on at this point. Spartans with Osborne, Butler, Wilson, Jenkins, and Gatewood on the floor. Aurora will try to get a few more stops. Hammond for Jaeger. Aurora just all over the floor defensively now. Jaeger up top, eight on the shot clock. Coleman has it outside. Knox with four to shoot, long three-pointer. No, the rebound tipped out. And a new 20 for Lakeland. That's a critical offensive rebound. Or they have been defeated soundly on the offensive glass in the second half. But they get a huge one here, but an offensive foul called on Knox. As he took it to the rim, he has four fouls. But that was a 43-second possession for Lakeland. Even without points, it's effective. 75 seconds left, Aurora down five, and now Lakeland will set up a 1-2-2 -two -two to slow down Aurora. Osborne breaks it inside, Wilson the reverse goes. It's a one possession game with one minute to play. And Aurora gets a steal. Gatewood Jenkins to tie it, yes! 54 seconds left and it's 82 all. Pandemonium here in Thornton Gymnasium as Aurora has come all the way back from 24 down. Full timeout Aurora. 
How about that? Jenkins this season, only three three-point makes. What a time to come up with number four. Oh, at halftime, did you ever think we would be right here right now? Lakeland made 11 threes, shot 60% for the first half, but Aurora 62% from the floor after halftime with only four three-point attempts. It has been a comprehensive performance for Aurora in the second half. And now it is very much anybody's game as we've played 39 minutes, six seconds, and have decided nothing. So to reset it here, Aurora is in the double bonus and they have the possession arrow. Both teams with a couple of timeouts remaining. Lakeland was just trying to get out of here with the win as Aurora turned on the momentum and now have to find a way to claw back in front. Coleman sends it out to Knox, 10 on the shot clock. Jaeger now, drive cut off, tries again, blocked. Osborne has it, the shot clock is off. 25 seconds left. Aurora has timeouts, they will not call one. They will try to walk it off here and complete a sensational comeback. Gatewood, 10 seconds. Now Steve Christensen will take timeout. Nine point six seconds left. Full timeout Aurora. Now we'll take our last breather as well. This is Aurora University men's basketball. to all. Aurora and Lakeland are tied up after Aurora came back from down two dozen at halftime. They have the ball, they have the possession arrow, and they have one timeout left as they will try to win it here. Shot clock is off. Jenkins will inbound it for Gatewood. Seven seconds, Gatewood out on the far side, dribbling underneath, throws it out, Hammond picks it off. Bouliox from half court for the win, doesn't draw iron, and for the third time this season, all at home, Aurora will go to overtime. Lakeland outscores Aurora 55-31 in the first half. The Spartans outscore the Muskies 51-27 in the second half. And it's 82-82 with five minutes of overtime coming up. to all five minutes of overtime coming up Aurora has won both of its overtime contests this year defeating North Central back on November 15th by a couple and most recently Dominican on Tuesday night 85 74 let's reset it 
Jenkins has four fouls. He'll be joined by Wilson, Butler, Gatewood, and Osborne for Lakeland. It'll be Bouliox facing Butler for the tip off here. Coleman and Jaeger on the floor. And then Knox and Hammond as well. They both have four fouls. Spartans win the tip. Well, Lakeland will get the possession arrow. Aurora will have a chance to take its first lead in 35 minutes. And counting, Gatewood driving. Gets the foul here from Jaeger, who picks up his third. So while we have a moment, Aurora in the double bonus, they'll shoot two, pretty much everything at this point. Lakeland in the bonus for all of overtime. Gatewood is 21, but it's his first free throw attempt tonight. He is 22. Exceeding his season best by quite a bit. That was 17 at Augustana. Didn't score at all on Tuesday at only two field goal attempts. Has been very good today. He'll split the free throws here. Aurora in front at long last. 83-82. And now the Muskies with their first possession of overtime. They'll try to reset. Jaeger dribbles into the lane. Contested jumper. Doesn't go. Gatewood pulls in the rebound. Lakeland has not played overtime this year. Aurora at this point is plenty seasoned in extra time. Gatewood to Butler on the right wing. Butler attacks, gets to the rim, and will get to the line. This foul is on Hammond, and he has fouled out. Ten points for Hammond, and his evening will be over. Polzine's going to replace him. For Aurora, Gatewood leading all Spartans with 22 points. Butler is 13 points, 8 rebounds. Osborne 15, 5, and 3 tonight. Trey Jenkins has 9 points, 5 rebounds. Nolan Boffin, 9 points. Justin Wilson, 9 points. Then 4 for Javon McCautry and a couple for Trey Hamilton. First free throw attempt for Butler is through. For Lakeland, Cam Yeager, 25 points, six rebounds. Aiden Polzine, a season best, 22 points, four rebounds. Hammond just fouled out with 10 points. Christian Knox, nine points, five rebounds, four assists. Five for Cam Bouliox and for Caleb Fuller. Four for Asanje Hunter and a couple for Travis Coleman. Butler makes both free throws. Aurora up three. They've scored the last 12 points of the game over the last five and a half minutes until now. Coleman buries the three to tie it up. And it's 85 all, 349, playing overtime. Lakeland had missed six straight shots. Now Butler on the drive, the hoop, and the harm. This one's on Christian Knox, and he has fouled out. And now it's becoming a battle of attrition as he heads to the bench with nine points and Asanje Hunter will replace him. Butler, now with 15 on the night, will look to once again make it a three-point Aurora lead. And he does. Well, it looked like Lakeland was going to cruise to 100 now Aurora has the upper hand in getting there first. Maybe that's what it'll take tonight. Coleman for Polzine for three, no. Big rebound by Bouliox. And he's fouled on the way down. He'll go to the line for the one and one. Butler is pleading his case. Foul is on Wilson. And that'll be his third. Aurora, two more fouls in the one and one. Bouliox converted a three-point play earlier in this game. Up over 71% at the line this season. Misses the front end. Aurora has only led by this many. That's the max. They have not had a two-possession lead all day. This pass from Gatewood, too hot for Wilson to handle. 
And Aurora's 10th turnover. They're still plus 11 in that category, but they had a chance to extend their lead. Now they'll have to try to hang on to it here. Bulliox outside, Coleman three in rhythm. No, rebound tipped out. Bulliox tracks it down. Extra 20 here. Bulliox rumbles to the hole, gets it to go, and the foul. That's number four on Wilson, joining Jenkins on the cusp of fouling out. Just saw Bulliox miss the front end of the one and one. With 250 left, he'll try to tie it up at 88. Here in overtime. Bulliox left it short. Wilson gets the rebound. Aurora hangs on to the lead. And Gatewood walks it across the timeline. Osborne out on the right side. Corner now, Butler. Lakeland stolen man to man. Butler drives and is stuffed at the rim. It was Coleman getting there. First block tonight for Lakeland. Good time for that. Average three and a half of those per game, but Aurora's done well to avoid that. There's still 12 on the shot clock. Ball goes into the short corner for Wilson. Backs down his man and is called for the offensive foul as Jaeger goes to the floor. Steve Christensen not happy about that. And is not going to win this argument. There's 229 left. That's Aurora's final foul in the one and one, and now both teams will shoot two for the rest of this one. I don't know if there's a timeout being called here or what's going on. Oh, I stand corrected. I apologize. That, that was the offensive foul on Wilson. He's fouled out. So they had to get someone else into the game. My apologies there. Nolan Boffman replaces him. And now Lakeland will try to go in front in overtime here for the first time. Hunter driving. He'll be fouled by Gatewood and will have to earn that lead at the line. First foul today for Gatewood. 2.16 left in overtime. Women's game was set to begin at 4.15. That will be pushed back. We'll get a timeout here. And it looks like it's going to be from Aurora. And they'll have one timeout remaining. And so we'll step away. 88-87, Aurora in front. Just past the midpoint of overtime, this is Aurora University men's basketball. If you're just joining us, folks, well, you missed just about the whole thing. We're in overtime. It's 88 to 87, Aurora up. Lakeland at the line with a chance to tie and take the lead if they can get both. All Lakeland in the first half, all Aurora in the second half as they erased a 24 point deficit, but turned it over on their final possession of the game with a chance to walk off as winners. And now here we are in the extra session. Asanjay Hunter has just tied it up. Lakeland is not led in overtime. He will try to put the Muskies in front, but does not. 88 all, 214, playing overtime. Muskies have the arrow. Both teams in the double bonus. Osborne on the right wing. 
Wing to wing to Boffman on the nearest side. He looks to attack, spins, gets to the rim. How about that layup? My goodness. Boffman with 11 with the tough bucket. 145 left, Aurora up 90 to 88, but Lakeland so dangerous from three can take the lead at a moment's notice. Travel called here on Bulliox. A good defense just inside the perimeter there by Aurora forced the hesitation and the travel. 90 seconds left, Aurora once again will try to go up by two possessions. Gatewood near center court going to work on Hunter. The crossover, the handoff to Boffman, right to the rim, got it to fall off back iron. A four point Aurora lead, 113 left in overtime. Hunter, right wing here for the Spart or for the Muskies. Bouliox driving off the window and in to close it to two. Timeout Lakeland with a minute and one second remaining. Full timeout, 30 second timeout Lakeland. What a day. Real quick around the neck, Illinois Tech defeats Concordia, Wisconsin 82 to 70. St. Norbert looking to close out Rockford, 27 seconds left at 66 to 58. Green Knights, Wisconsin Lutheran finished off Dominican 93 to 73. Concordia Chicago, the win over Marion, 95 to 87. In a battle of three and O teams atop the neck, Concordia Chicago now all alone in first. And no result from Benedictine and MSOE, set to begin at two, not of an update there. Uh, this one has been wild, friends. Aurora up 92-90, 61 seconds left. Lakeland will not pick up Aurora full court. Gatewood is across the timeline. They'll flip it here to Jenkins and now Boffman. 15 on the shot clock, 45 left in the ball game. Potentially, at least in overtime, Osborne looks to break down Hunter off the dribble. Goes outside, Boffman off of a tip. He goes to the rack and gets it. 15 for Boffman. Aurora by four, 30 seconds left in overtime. Bouliox drives, lays it in, but the shot clock will be off for Aurora. Lakeland will call timeout. This will be a full timeout. And so here's the situation. 25.6 seconds left, shot clock will be off. Aurora up 94 to 92. Certainly Lakeland will be looking to force a turnover off the inbound. And if they don't get that, we'll need to foul immediately. Aurora has gone 15 of 21 at the free throw line. They have shot it well today after a bit of a slow start. Ended up going eight of 10 in the second half at the line. 12 of 15 at the stripe since halftime. While Lakeland, eight of eight in the first half, six of 10 since. So we'll see who Aurora puts out on the floor in this situation. Looks like Jenkins, Osborne, Butler, Gatewood, and Boffman, Aurora's best free throw shooter, Justin Wilson, has fouled out. They're scoring nine points. Jenkins gets it in for Gatewood. Back to Osborne. He'll get it across the timeline all the way down to Boffman, who puts up the shot, but it's blocked. I don't know that Steve Christensen wanted that, or... Let's put it this way, maybe not that look. I think he would have taken the uncontested layup. That's not what Aurora got, but they do get it into the front court. They'll have the ball with 18 seconds. You can live with that. Inbound here for Butler. He'll be fouled and will go to the line with 16.7 ticks remaining. He'll get two tries. 
All right, Butler has been very good for Aurora here, really all season and tonight. Left the first free throw short, so he stays on 18 points. He'll have a second try here to at least make it a full one possession game. High pressure free throw here and Butler makes it. 95-92. 95-92. Timeout Lakeland, it'll be their final timeout, which will at least apply a little bit of pressure on getting the ball in. AU women's basketball against Lakeland coming up. Looks like we're likely looking at a start a bit after 4.30. It has gone final. St. Norbert defeats Rockford. So we're going to see Concordia Chicago at 4-0. St. Norbert right behind at 4-1. Marion at 3-1. And, and then Aurora right now is 13.2 seconds away from being 3-1 as well. Again, a lot, and I do mean a lot, of basketball remaining. not only in the conference schedule, but only 13 seconds is an eternity against a team that can shoot the three like Lakeland. Coleman inbounds it into the backcourt for Hunter. Muskies looking to get it even. Hunter finds Jaeger, left wing three for the tie, no! Rebound Boffman, he'll be fouled with two and a half seconds left, and if he can make one, this one, will be over and Aurora will finish off a sensational comeback from down 24. In a first half where absolutely nothing went right. They have had nearly everything come up Aurora since. Boffman makes the free throw and that effectively will do it. Oh my goodness. What a win for Aurora. Boffman makes two to complete a 17 point night. Hunter, final shot of the ball game is short. Aurora wins this one in overtime, 97 to 92. Unbelievable. Fans were treated to a terrific basketball game. Aurora ends up shooting 51% from the field, including better than 63% after halftime. 3 of 13 from 3, 18 of 25 at the line. Lakeland finishes 50% from the field, 16 of 34 from deep, and 14 of 18 at the line. Aurora with the rebounding advantage, 38 to 35, 15 to 11 on the offensive glass as they dominated the final 25 minutes. They only turned it over 11 times, Lakeland 22 times. Aurora ends up winning points off turnovers, 32 to 9. In the paint, 62 to 28 and on fast break points, 22 to eight. Julian Gatewood, 22 to lead the Spartans. That's a season high for him. Noah Butler, 19 points, eight rebounds. Season high, 17 for Nolan Boffin. Michael Osborne, 15 points, six rebounds. And for Trey Jenkins, a career high, nine points, five rebounds, nine points for Justin Wilson, four for Javon McCautry, a couple for Trey Hamilton tonight. For Lakeland, Cam Yeager. 25 points, he had 20 at halftime. They were able to slow him down after that. He added six rebounds, Aiden Polzine, a season best 22 points, but again, 17 at halftime. 11 points for Kai Bouliox, 
10 for Isaiah Hammond, nine for Christian Knox, five apiece for Travis Coleman, Asanjay Hunter, and Caleb Fuller. Aurora six and three with a win that looked very unlikely at halftime. Three and one in conference play. Lakeland falls to six and three in the season, one and two in the NAC. Time of the game, one hour and 46 minutes. So we will try to just settle down after that. Looks like the women's basketball game between Aurora and Lakeland is set to begin at 420. So we hope you'll join us for that. The final, Aurora comes all the way back from 24 down to win it in overtime, 97 to 92. For Dylan Lyman, Ethan Carmine on the camera. My name is Sean Fry. Women's Hoops is next. We'll see you next time for Aurora University men's basketball here at athletics.aurora.edu.